Well, hello there. My name is Kathleen, and I'm out here at Shangri-La Gardens on an adventure looking for animals. Now, where out here can I find animals? I think I'm gonna look in their habitats. A habitat is a place where an animal lives. A habitat is an animal's home. And it's important when you're looking for habitats to find a place that has food, water, shelter, and space. That's what makes a habitat a good home for an animal. Whoa, I found my first habitat. This place has long, tall grasses. Oh, and I think I see some flowers out there. This habitat at Shangri-La Gardens is called a meadow. Meadows have great places for animals to hide and all of those flowers provide nectar for animals to eat. What animals do you think live in a meadow? Well, let's go find out. Let's take a close up look at what I found. In here, I have found several insects. I can tell they're insects because they have six legs, three body parts, and two antenna. This is such a great place to find insects because a meadow has perfect food, water, and shelter for them. Whoa! What's that sound over there? <sighs> Ooh. Who are you? I'm a squirrel. What are you doing here? I came out here to the meadow on a vacation, but ooh, it's hot, 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 hot. Ooh, and there's no acorns to eat, and I don't know what to do. A meadow is the wrong habitat for a squirrel. I'm gonna go back to my habitat in the forest. Ah! Well, we haven't explored the forest yet. Hey, squirrel, we're coming too. Come on. See you later, squirrel. Wow, that squirrel was right. This forest is shady and cool from all the trees out here. A forest is a great habitat for lots of animals because there are tall trees to live in as well as laying trees that are decomposing for animals to burrow through. I wonder what else we could see in this forest. Oh, there was a weird hole there. What kind of animal could have made that hole? Whoa! That was such a cool armadillo. An armadillo is a mammal, just one of the many animals that you can find in this habitat, the forest. Now I know forest habitats also have tiny animals too. That's why I brought my magnifying lens. So let's go on a quick hike to look for food, water, shelter, and some space to see what else lives here. Look, friends. This looks like a new habitat. It looks just like the forest, except there's water in there. Let's go get a closer look to figure out what kind of habitat this place is. Oh wait, I know this habitat. It's called a swamp. A swamp has plenty of water, lots of food on top and under the water, 
and all the plants growing in the swamp make for a great shelter. But I'm a little disappointed. I really thought I was going to see some animals out here. Well, maybe I can go check our game cameras to see if there are any nocturnal animals. Those are the animals that are awake at night. shared our habitat with so many animals. People come out here during the day and those nocturnal animals come over at night. The swamp is a great place for animals to make a home. Now wait, look over there. That part of the swamp looks different. Where are all the trees? We'll have to go check it out. Let's go. <laughs> Silly me, I know this habitat. It's called a bayou. I come out here all of the time with my family to go fishing. That's how I know it is a good habitat. If I can catch fish here, that means there's food, water, and shelter. So let's see what we can catch today. A bayou habitat is not just a great place to live for fish, but animals that eat fish, like turtles and alligators and birds. A bayou is a great home. What a great adventure we went on today. We explored four different habitats. Remember the meadow had tall grasses and lots of flowers with nectar. The forest was cool and shady with those tall trees, but also fallen logs. Then we went to the swamp, which had tall trees and a lot of water for aquatic and water loving animals. Then, my favorite, we made it to the bayou and even went fishing for a minute. All of these habitats were different, but they had food, water, shelter, and space for the animals to live. A lot of these habitats, people like you and me like to explore too. Now that we've explored all around Shangri-La Gardens, we're gonna send you over to the Stark Museum of Art to explore their new exhibit, West As Home. You can learn about animal habitats there, but also people habitats too. Have fun, we'll see you next time. Hey friends, welcome to the Stark Museum of Art. I hope you enjoyed your adventure through three different habitats at Shangri-La. I'm Jennifer Rastari Dickinson, and I'm going to show you around the museum today. And now that you've learned about what a habitat is and what three different habitats look like, I'm going to show you some different ways that artists have used and portrayed habitats. Let's take a look. The first artist I want to tell you about is an artist who's known for depicting animals and birds in their natural habitats. This artist, John James Audubon, is known for drawing his birds life-size and in their natural habitats. Let's take a closer look at this print. In this print of the gold-winged woodpeckers, we can see elements of the habitat. What elements can you identify? Can you spy shelter? I spy birds on and in this tree. What about food? I see a bird holding a grub or a worm, certainly something that he plans to eat. We can guess that if there's a tree growing, that water would be nearby. 
And certainly if these birds are active, that there's also air. This is one of hundreds of prints that Audubon made depicting birds in their natural habitats. Now let's take a look at another work of art that shows a different way artists use habitats. In this gallery, we can see different ways that artists use their habitat for the materials for their artwork, from American Indian pottery from Santa Domingo Pueblo to basketry from the Clinket. This basket is another example of a way artists use natural materials from their habitats to create works of art. The Hopi artist who created this basket would have collected natural plants from their natural habitat, prepared them, and then woven the basket. So artists not only show habitats, they also create artwork using the materials from their habitats. Now I've got one more artist for us to check out, so let's head to our last spot. This work of art looks like a painting, but it's actually not. When you look closely, you'll see many different pieces that form this sun painting or organic collage. Artist Pansy Stockton created this original collage using natural materials in unexpected ways. As we look closely, we can start to identify different materials that Pansy Stockton used to create this collage. It's amazing to think that she could use up to 40,000 individual pieces in each collage that she made. This collage, Spring Book Cabin, was made in 1938, and it shows a cabin in a forest, which we happen to know was located in Colorado. What things can you identify? We see a cabin, rocks, trees, maybe hints of mountains in the background. If you look closely, you could even see where Pansy Stockton signed her name. I bet you noticed that this work of art has tons of texture. Texture is one of the elements of art, and it's the way something looks or the feel of a surface. What kinds of textures would you describe in this work of art? Do you see smooth, rough, bumpy? What other words might you use to describe the texture? Another element that we see are shapes. Pansy Stockton used very clear shapes to create some of these images. Some are geometric shapes like squares, triangles, rectangles, and some are organic shapes. What shapes do you see? Springbrook Cabin is just one of many Pansy Stockton natural or organic collages we have in our collection. Let's take a look at another one that's located in a different part of the country. Now this location is very different from the Rocky Mountain Forest that we were just in. It almost feels like a Southwest desert. What do you notice about the differences in the types of house? They're smooth, the color might be different. Definitely we see different textures. One of the things I wanted to share with you about this work of art is that Pansy Stockton used materials from her travels across the country. One of the materials in this is seaweed, certainly not something would have been found in the Southwest desert. Other things were mosses, gourds, rocks, sumac leaves, things that she might have found in her own home state of Colorado, but also in other places that she lived. Pansy Stockton used materials and collected materials throughout her life and would save those materials and use them when the right project came along. Now, before we wrap up, let's take a look at one more collage here in the gallery. In this collage, we're looking out a window. So we're in our habitat because we're in our shelter, but we're also looking at our habitat outside of our window. This is a unique composition that Pansy Stockton used. We can actually see the panes of the window in this. And if we look carefully, you can see materials that she's used maybe to suggest a snowy day. I hope you've enjoyed our adventure through the galleries today as we looked at how artists show habitats as well as how artists use their habitat to create works of art. Now we've got a great art studio project for you next and I want to challenge you to think about going on an adventure outside in your habitat and collecting some materials that you can use. Enjoy your studio project and we hope to see you here again at the Stark Museum of Art soon.